<clears throat> okay, I've got a really cool video for you guys today. So it comes from the 2019 IMC, which is an undergraduate level math contest that's uh, contested in Europe. And it's this cool infinite product. So we have the product as n goes from three to infinity of n cubed plus three n all squared over n to the six minus 64. Let's real quick notice that we can't really start at two or at one because if we started at two or one, that would include the n equal two term and that would zero out the denominator and that wouldn't really work here. Okay, so generally when we've got an infinite product, we want to see if it telescopes. And in order to get an idea if this thing telescopes, let's see if we can rewrite this numerator and the denominator anyway. Well, first of all, let's notice that this numerator is pretty easy to rewrite. So we've got n cubed plus 3n. So let's see, we can factor an n out of that. Well, this whole thing is squared. So when we factor an n out of that, it's squared. So we have n squared times n squared plus 3 squared. So let's just keep that in mind. And as we keep that in mind, let's look at the denominator. So this denominator is n to the 6 minus 64. So that's both a difference of squares and a difference of cubes. Let's maybe start by factoring it as a difference of squares and then we'll factor the resulting things. So this is like n cubed squared minus eight squared. That's how you wanna think about this as a difference of squares. That means this factor is like n cubed minus eight times n cubed plus eight. Okay, so that's good. Let's box that off so it's to the side. And now we've got two well, a difference of cubes and a sum of cubes. Both of those have factorization rules. So this difference of cubes factors like n minus two times n squared and then plus two n plus four. And then the sum of cubes factors like n plus two and then n squared minus two n plus four. So in general, what we have is a cubed plus minus b cubed can be factored as a plus minus b times a squared minus plus a b plus b squared. So we get the same sign in this first term, this linear term, and the opposite sign in the middle of that quadratic term. Okay, so this is good. But now we'd like to somehow match these terms in the numerator with terms in the denominator. Let's recall that this is the numerator, well, whereas this will be the denominator. So this n squared could perhaps be split up between this n minus two and this n plus two. That might be a nice way to do that. And then let's note that this n squared plus three is an irreducible quadratic. And then you can check via the discriminant that this and this are also irreducible quadratics. We've got an irreducible quadratic squared, and then we've got two irreducible quadratics there. We just have to take those red underlying terms and see if we can write them so that they look similar to this thing above. And in fact, we can. And we can do that by completing the square in both. So here we get n plus 1 squared plus 3. So if you multiply that out, that you'll get n squared plus 2n plus 4. And then down here, we have n minus 1 squared plus 3. So we have something like that. So just as a little bit of a summary for our denominator, we have n to the six minus 64 can be rewritten as n minus two times n plus two times n plus one squared plus three times n minus one squared plus three. Great, okay, so let's maybe take these tools that we've developed and start working through the problem on the next board. So on the last board, we looked at some nice ways to rewrite this numerator and this denominator so that they could maybe be played off of each other. 
And now I've taken our product, which I'll call P, and I've written it as a limit of partial products. And I took that numerator and I factored it like we did before, and that denominator, and I factored it and completed the square like we did before. And now we're ready to get started. Dude, you can't keep doing this. Your YouTube person told you that you have to plug your channel so we can reach 500,000 subscribers. But, okay, so first of all, I know that I'm supposed to plug the channel more often for subscribers, but it's uh, uncomfortable sometimes. And can we even get to pi 100,000 subscribers? It seems like it's unreachable. We can do it, I promise we can do it. Okay, well, well, let's plug the channel then. So maybe you guys should subscribe, prove Justin right that we can hit pi 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And now let's get back into the problem. So get out of here and we'll get back into the problem. Okay. So we got this thing written as the partial product and a limit, but the great thing about writing this as a partial product is that we can use the associativity and the commutativity of multiplication to split this up into a bunch of different products. You're not allowed to do that before you've got it as a limit of a finite product because those uh, rules do not hold. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have the limit as this capital N goes to infinity. And like I said, I'm going to split all of these into different pieces. It may seem like a little bit too much, but I think that maybe it's the easiest way to see what the solution will be. So I've got the product as little n goes from three up to capital N of n squared. So that's that portion. And then I have the product as n goes from three up to capital N of this N squared plus three quantity squared. And then in the denominator, I have a bunch of terms. So I have this product as N goes from three up to capital N of N minus two. The product as N goes from three up to capital N of N plus two. The product as n goes from 3 to capital N of this, n minus 1 squared plus 3. And then finally, this product as n goes from 3 up to capital N of n plus 1 squared plus 3. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, but now that we've taken care of that, we can start re-indexing. So we've got our partial product written out, all split up. And I put kind of like terms on top of each other in the numerator and the denominator. So we've got this product of n and this product of n minus 2, this other product of n, this product of n plus 2, and then so on and so forth. And now we'd like to re-index things in the denominator so they look like things in the numerator. So I can do that with this one that I've underlined in pink by replacing n with n plus 2. So if I replace n with n plus 2, I will have n instead of, I'll have n plus 2 minus 2, which cancels down to n. Now notice if n plus 2 is equal to 3, then n is equal to 1. And if n plus 2 is equal to n, then n is equal to capital N minus 2. And so that sets up our re-indexing. So that means that this guy right here can be written as the product as little n goes from 1 up to n minus 2 of n. So we have something like that going on right there. Okay, so now let's see what happens with this n plus 2, which I'll underline in blue. So here I'll replace with n with n minus 2. So when n minus 2 is 3, that means that n is 5. And when n minus 2 is capital N, that means n is capital N plus 2. So that's how our re-indexing will work there. So that's going to turn this into the product of little n goes from 5 up to capital N of n. Great. Now we'll do, again, the same thing over here, or the same sort of thing over here. Here I'll replace n with n plus 1. When n plus 1 is equal to 3, that makes n equal to 2. When n plus 1 is equal to capital N, that makes n equal to n minus 1. So that's going to turn this into the product as n goes from, let's see, 2 up to capital N minus 1 of 
let's see, we have n squared plus three, putting it in line with what we have up there. Okay, then finally we have one more, and this one that underlined in red, we'll replace n with n minus one. When n minus one is three, that makes n equal to four. And then let's see, when n minus one is capital N, that makes n equal capital N plus one. That gives us our upper and lower bound for this new product. We have the product as n goes from four up to capital N plus one of n squared plus three. <clears throat> okay, so now let's maybe bring these four and replace them up here. Okay, so I replaced everything in the denominator as we re-indexed on the last board. And now we can do some nice simplifications. So let's maybe put this in pink parentheses. Those are like our like terms there. Here we've got some green parentheses for these like terms. Here we've got some blue parentheses for these like terms. And then finally some red parentheses, though they're getting wiggly for these like terms. And then we can make our simplification. So here we have, this is the limit as capital N goes to infinity still. Then we have this big product. So from the pink part, let's notice that in the denominator, we've got two terms at the bottom that we don't have at the top. And that's the n equals one and two terms. So that gives us a one times two in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we've got two terms uh, at the top that we don't have in the denominator. And that's the n minus one and the n term. So that's what we're getting from our pink simplification. Now let's see what we get from our green simplification. So now we have a three times four in the numerator from those bottom terms. And then in the denominator, we'll have, let's see, an n plus one and an n plus two. So there's our green terms. Okay, sweet. Now let's see what's happening over here. So here we'll have top terms that we don't have over here. And that's just the capital N term. So that's our n squared plus three. Then here we'll have bottom terms and that's the n equals two term. So if we plug n equals two here, we'll get two squared, which I believe is four, plus three is seven. So we've got seven for that. Okay, so that's what we have there. And then finally, in these red parentheses, we've got a bottom term in the numerator. That's for the n equals three term. Plugging in n equals three, we get nine plus three, which I believe is 12. And then in the denominator, we have an n plus one term. So that's gonna be n plus one squared plus three. Okay, so like I said, that's happening in the denominator. Okay, so now let's note that we have a uh, quartic polynomial in the numerator and a quartic polynomial in the denominator. And so those essentially just cancel each other out as we take the limit as n goes to infinity. And I think not much else has to be said about that. And then we're finally left with this product three times four times 12 over two times seven. Well, notice that's gonna be a cancellation gives us three times two times 12 over seven. But let's see, three times two times 12 is six times 12 is 72 over seven. And that would be our final answer. And if you like this problem, I've actually got a couple of other problems on infinite products. One should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.